Hello guys, how are you doing? Good? Okay. So, uh, my name is, uh, well, my name is Makoto, but in ENS, uh, it's matokun.is. Uh, how many people got this swag things? Great, okay. So probably for some of you, I was a man behind, you know, between the nice swag and, you know, the you. So like, you know, just making sure you got a QR code and all that stuff. But uh, I'm hope, hoping that uh, now I don't really have to ex explain what the ENS is. So it's a basically a Web3 username, whether you go to uh, POP or EtherScan or OpenSea or uh, ECXYZ, it's all matoken.is. So that's my name. And uh, so today, I think this, this room is mostly in a theme of L, uh, L2 track. So we are going to talk about kind of L2 uh, off-chain, interchain uh, strategy on what ENS is doing. And uh, we are actually been doing since kind of 2020. And it, there was a lot of talk and uh, work going on, but people are not quite sure where we are at right now. And uh, it's actually some of the feature, it's still in the halfway of the roadmap, but it's some of them are already available. So first I will going to explain uh, what kind of the, the cross-chain example already available to you. So this one doesn't really require any technical technical knowledge. Then I go a bit uh, deeper to the underfoot. The food. So probably I, I show a bit of code, so mostly for devs, and for what's next section is, yeah, what, what's gonna happen, in the, probably a bit technical. Okay, so uh, for some of you may know, uh, Coinbase, uh, one of the biggest exchange, uh, recently announced that they decide to issue subdomain to all the uh, users. I think there's a couple from the Coinbase. You wanna raise your hands? Okay, thank you. Woo! And uh, it's great because like whenever you go to like, you know, exchange and you change, uh, you get your fiat to Coinbase, then if you want to move into somewhere for the DeFi, then like first thing struggle is like, oh, what's how to send to, you know, the same address. And uh, I think it's great that it's being, uh, ENS is available, available from the kind of, as soon as a new user got on board with crypto and uh, uh, I got in you know, makoto.cb.id because Matoku is already not available, unfortunately. But like if you go to your you know, profile page, and uh, another thing is, so Coinbase has, I think coinbase.eth, ET, but they chose uh, cb.id firstly because it's a lot shorter. And uh, another thing is, uh, ENS is ju not just about .eth. You can actually import the order your internet domain as a Ethereum name. So like Argent Wallet has a .xyz and you can make a .com and stuff. So they decided to use cb.id to import the DNS to kind of ENS world, then decided to uh, issue subdomains. So once it's done, uh, you can see uh, my few uh, handwritten avatar and uh, uh, yeah, website and the email address. And if you look into this, uh, our ENS manager, you can actually see the same thing. So it's the data which is stored in, a, I think it's in a database in Coinbase, is proxy through uh, basically Ethereum uh, layer one so that any dApps or like a, a wallet can actually access the data. And the great thing is uh, the user hasn't uh, paid any single gas. And another exa interesting example, so I think Coinbase case is, was in uh, completely off chain in the database. Uh, so Lens is another kind of uh, Web3 uh, social network, which provide a user profile. And how many people have Lens profile? Okay, maybe half of it. And so this stani.lens actually have a ENS associate, uh, sorry, Ethereum address associated with it. And something you might not know is, uh, it's actually, that's also a proxy to the uh, Ethereum L1, uh, sorry, ENS and on layer one. So if you actually look into it, you can actually see that on our ENS manager. And uh, this is kind of recent uh, release, but now uh, Betamask uh, supports, so that like if you try to send, I mean, no one really has to send East to Stani, you know, <laughs> if you want to, you know, you go to stani.lens.xyz. Uh, that, that's already available. And uh, this is another interesting 
things that, like so optimism. Uh, there's some community user just posted on the, uh, our forum that, hey, we created a name service. And they actually just booked uh, uh, what we are doing. And they created a kind of NFT. And they decided to issue subdomain on their NFT. And it's actually available on the optimism, which I didn't even know until he posted it, which was kind of crazy. And uh, but I do explain there's some nuance on the difference on how you do he's doing and what we could do in the uh, uh, next chapter. And uh, this is a really, really, really crazy thing is like, so we, I'm saying like off chain, which can be anything. So I show like database example. I showed you the lens is basically the polygon other EVM example. This is literally the Google doc and someone put the kind of integration so that if you type the uh, data into the Google spreadsheet, it actually updates, which is kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, some, I only got to know because someone tweeted it. So this is kind, yeah, it's called sheets.is, apparently. Okay, Sorry. so, and so current state is, so these things we've been doing, it's not something you can, uh, you can do it without any integration. So. We actually talked to many partners and the integration partners to integrate this thing first. So if you are a DAP developer, uh, if you want to uh, have these like a, you know, Coinbase subdomain or a Lens subdomain or a, a Sheet subdomain, uh, as long as you are DAP has, he suggests uh, later than 5.62 or Web3 Pi V6 or Web3 JS uh, V493, uh, you already have the uh, feature integrated. And also, uh, I think nowadays, uh, people use framework uh, kind of tool like Wagmi or uh, use that. They, because they use ESL.js underneath, that's already supported uh, yeah, right away. And for the wallet side, there's a, a wallets like Alpha Wallet, uh, Argent, Metamask, Umbro, Coinbase, Trust Wallet, Wallet Connect, and the uh, scan they all, uh, Integrate. So if you're using this, you can actually uh, send money to basically Stani or like any Coinbase user who has CBID subdomains if you want to. And so, yeah, what's common across? Oh, yeah. I just realized I can just read that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. So what's common across this example is basically storage agnostic. It can be the base polygon optimistic optimism or uh, Google spreadsheet. And uh, Depends on the storage. Uh, yeah, if it's in a, like a L2 or side chain, you might pay a little bit of gas. If it's in off chain, completely uh, gasless. And uh, interesting thing is like I think most of the stuff time like uh, if you use different chain, first things you have to do is like you go to MetaMask and you know change the network ID and the stuff. You don't have to do it because you don't want to know which chain these users' data are. And they like I don't want to know like you know where data is for the Coinbase users or uh, lens users, so that for the read-only purpose, uh, data is all available through L1. And this one, I will explain later, but we call it kind of trust not minimized. You find out a bit more detail. Okay, so under the hood, uh, so if there's any, pretty much all the things I'm going to say is in this docs, ens.domains, and there's a QR code, so if you, you are interested, you can just you know, take a shot. Sorry. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Four or five years. And the basic model is we have three, well, basically two big components. One is called registry, where it's a, just a big, gigantic dictionary, key value store. <coughs> and uh, instead of registry has the value, we return. So, for example, in this example, uh, you ask uh, what's the uh, user says, what's the uh, who dot is has in example it returns the x one two three four which is some uh, sm another smart contract called resolver and the resolver is the one uh, if you ask that resolver what's the address of who dot eth that returns the actual the uh, ethereum address so that that kind of two ways way and the, the reason we did is is, is the flexibility that uh, once you kind of change. It's very difficult to change smart contract once it's deployed to ask everybody to change point to the new one. Uh, so, but if you have a resolver, uh, each user or each name owner, this is important to understand, is a 
can swap the uh, resolver and have their own custom uh, logic, or if we release a new feature, you can upgrade to the new feature uh, all by, uh, by each user, by each domain. Okay, so this is a basic. And with this in mind, uh, what we do with this new interchain, uh, yeah, cross-chain uh, thing is something called CCIP read, also known as EIP3668, uh, secure off-chain data retrieval. And what I'm going to explain is, it's going to the, instead of the two-step model of the existing resolver, it's a, a three-step model. And uh, uh, I call it reva, request, and the verify. Uh, okay, so what it does for the first time is like, for example, if you go ask for the uh, data on the resolver, uh, instead of returning the data, it actually throws an exception uh, called off-chain lookup. And uh, so like a uh, this error message came from, I think, Solidity 8 point something. And uh, this interesting thing is like basically, it returns a different kind of data type by calling the same uh, function. So that like you don't have to, client doesn't have to know whether the function call is towards L1 or L, L2 or other place. It's just like you, uh, it reverts and it catches. And then once you revert, you catch the, uh, Revert message it has information about uh, this address, which is a uh, resolver. Then it has something called URL, uh, which is we call a gateway server, and uh, plus the call data, which uh, you know you send for the function call, and uh, of chain resolver resolver. So this is I think uh, the function type of the uh, function which you are gonna call once gate uh, once the gateway returns up results okay. and uh, what it work the code is a bit old so there might be some consistency that so step one revert and that's solidity code and the once that's done uh, so this is a, a web service that URL you know you just catch in a revert you call this uh, uh, web services and the uh, things it does is uh, first line is the server dot add is just like a uh, function uh, CCIP read server library offers like a, any, for any of the web services you have, you can kind of chuck in this uh, capability easily. Then what you do is you basically query the data from somewhere. It could be database, it could be of uh, a side chain, it could be Google spreadsheet. Then uh, after that, we basically ask uh, the gateway to sign the data and it returns uh, back to the client. And then once it's returned, uh, again, this is in L1 that uh, it basically uh, calls this function to, and you decode this uh, signature, and you check like who verified, and if you, it's verified by the gateway, it was specified in revert, we say, okay, uh, we trust this uh, gateway service, so like hence we return the data. So by, by using smart contract to be kind of proxy, yeah, user can retrieve the off-chain data without switching MetaMask or not knowing any other information. Uh, all these things are kind of encapsulated, especially using ESAS.js. So most of daily use, you don't actually even see it. But if you want to do it directly with the uh, interactive with smart contract, you kind of have to know. Okay. And uh, so once that basic logic of the uh, off-chain data retrieval is explained, next thing you also have to know is another uh, EIP called ENSIP10. So wildcard resolution uh, for issue subdomains that one thing you need to know in the case of, we are talking about biggest use case as uh, issuing subdomains. And when it goes to, uh, for example, cb.id, uh, cb.id does have contract, resolver contract in, on the L1, which basically acts as a gateway to off-chain. But your, the subdomain actually doesn't have any data on L1. And what it does is this is just another uh, rule we define in a client level that if I, I have a, let's say, uh, matokun, in this example, it says a.matokun.eth. And if a.matokun.eth doesn't exist, no, it doesn't have a resolver, uh, the client library uh, on asks to the parent, in that case, matokun.is, to say, do you know anything about your child? Then that child could go to L2 or off chain and get data. So that's how uh, kind of allows you to issue subdomains, which is ghastly because it doesn't exist on L1. 
And uh, so the consequence of this approach is first, so no on-chain event for issuing subdomain or records. So quite often uh, when you build uh, uh, dApps nowadays, you kind of rely heavily on uh, like, uh, something like subgraph to uh, retrieve uh, data with strict uh, information. Uh, in current specification, we don't have that. So uh, in our case, we kind of hard coding, like, you know, especially if you have done any coding on the ENS, uh, for example, text record, uh, key value store, uh, which key has been uh, set, we actually, are, or which coin type has been set, we actually retrieve from uh, the su subgraph, the graph subgraphs, and uh, because it, the graph information doesn't exist, uh, we actually basically hard code. And if you look into the ENS manager, and if you look into the subdomain of the cb.id or uh, Lenzo XYZ, you actually see that like, it doesn't exist because that, that whole thing doesn't exist on L1. And uh, another, so this is specific to the, uh, the CCIP protocol itself, but another thing what we are doing right now is it's actually kind of halfway through of going to our, what we really want to do. And currently, because we uh, rely on this kind of centralized uh, gateway model to sign the keys, so if you kind of key which gateway is has is compromised? You, the malicious actor could potentially basically repoint all the subdomain address to my address, so they all the money could go. So, uh, correct uh, protecting the gateway has uh, some security concern, and for that reason, uh, if you have a gateway, you you have to deploy gateway by yourself. You can't let other people to deploy ga gateway and use their own. So that's kind of limitation of current approach. However. It, it, it's here and it's working. So another uh, photo time is that if you want to try out this approach into your app, uh, this is a QR code to take a photo with me smiling. Thank you. And so what's next? And uh, so we are kind of, yeah, as I said, it's kind of halfway. And uh, so we did the off-chain data retrieval, ticked, and basic library and wallets integrated, ticked. And so there's three other things uh, we kind of have to solve to, to go to where we really want to achieve, uh, go. And the first thing is uh, called CC, oh, sorry, uh, CCWDP, aka EIP5559, is called Cross-Chain Ride uh, Deferral Protocol. But uh, I think it's the joint uh, uh, EIP with, I think, Coinbase and uh, Nick Johnson, I think. is basically, so far, you saw that uh, all the data can be retrieved on L1 so that uh, you don't need to switch network to read the data, but once the next step is actually you want to let users to update the data. And currently, I think uh, in case of Lens, Lens have its own interface on L L2, so like uh, you have to know that you have to update on Lens. Uh, in case of Coinbase, you have to know that you have to do it in a Coinbase uh, basically extension. But this one kind of use a similar approach to CCIP read to return the, like, where uh, you need to kind of read points to your endpoint or, like, a URL to update the data. So this is kind of fresh. Oh, no, it's June. June. So it's been there, but I only get to know, like, a few weeks ago that this existed. So uh, it's fresh, but, like, uh, there is already draft, so you can take a look. And uh, next, so, yeah, trust minimized re resolver eco uh, roll-ups so that so far, I was talking about quite kind of centralized approach, like you have to trust the gateway. What we uh, have designed is going, uh, so yeah, one of the stuff of a roll up is the fact that like a, you, most of the roll up, whether it's a kind of uh, optimistic or ZK, that their basic principle is to batch write uh, L2 data to periodically, you know, batch write data into L1. That means you can actually, uh, verify the state of L2 on L1 using L1 contra. Uh, so, yeah, optimistic uh, roll-up uses fraud proof and uh, ZK uses validity proof. And uh, once, and uh, my understanding is that uh, optimism or uh, like stock where all these uh, companies listed, they do have basic function. So once we have that function, what are we gonna, do I explain, how do I, here. So here it's uh, just like retrieving the data and signing the uh, message. But what you can do on the L2 roll-up is like you can get basically get the proof, data with the proof, and it, uh, 
yeah, you construct the Marco uh, tree, and uh, on this uh, verify stage on a uh, uh, smart contract, you can basically call, uh, I forgot the name of the op optimism call. Do you remember verify? Was state commitment something verify? Yeah. for the function to verify? And by doing that, uh, even if a gateway returns minus data, oh, my time is already up. Okay, uh, you can uh, you don't have to trust. So that's are you gonna is it completely up or another five minutes uh, up? Okay, so uh, I think I already mentioned. And there's a demo which we did two years ago for the optimism. So optimism, we know like how it works. And we are right in the middle of updating to the latest version. And uh, yeah, I'll skip the order end. But all the end, you know, this now you took my photo, so sorry. So the QR code, so you should refer to. And the more important things is, yeah, we have a state of ENS by Nick Johnson at uh, 4.30. Uh, so yeah, that's it.